welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and today we have the reading blog for The Trials of Apollo, number three, The Burning Maze. Like with every video in the playlist, I will leave linked up above. Me and my friend Hanani are making our way through the Rick Riordan universe and we are currently in the third book for the Trials of Apollo series, The Burning Maze. The Trials of Apollo series follows Apollo, <laughs> due to something that occurs in the Heroes of Olympus series, is punished by his father Zeus back to Earth as a human boy. While he is on Earth, the only way that he is able to return back to the heavens and back to a goddess is if he saves and restores five oracles. With two oracles under his belt, Apollo must return to the labyrinths, to the mazes, to liberate the third oracle from another Roman Emperor. I have absolutely been loving this series so this one as you can expect is no exception. I will go back to Kelsey a couple of days ago so we can start from the beginning of the vlog and I'll see you at the end with my final review for The Burning Maze. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey. How Nanny will be joining me soon. And these are the reading sprints for The Burning Maze, the third book in The Trials of Apollo by Rick Riordan. So currently we are in the middle of our first sprint. We have about 20 minutes left. And I just got to the third chapter, which is page 20. While I was eating supper, I'm listening to it on audio. A lot has happened, obviously, like they're in the labyrinth, they're being chased right away so far. They have no idea which emperor they're dealing with, they have no idea about anything and all they know is that the emperor they are dealing with is sending obviously like monsters and difficulties throughout the labyrinth. So I'm going to continue with this. I'm very excited to be with Grover again. I haven't seen him since the Percy Jackson series or perhaps the Heroes of Olympus series. Yeah he was in the Heroes of Olympus series but I haven't seen him since then. I'm obviously very interested to see how Grover intertwines himself within this friend group and now that I'm figuring out how these stories go who will appear at the end of the book and thus be in the fourth book. So welcome, tag along on this journey. I will update you probably at the next sprint or when I get to about the 100 page mark. Yeah no that's super cool. Yeah because when I was like 18 and you know partaking in the devil's lettuce um, I was definitely <laughs> like <laughs> I was like I like dinosaurs maybe I could be like a paleontologist. <laughs> <laughs> but Oh my god, a bird is flew into my window. Hello? Yeah. Hockey. Hockey. That's cool. I've never been to a hockey game before. You have to come to Canada. We have to but you have to come in the winter because I feel like you need to you need to experience like the the things of Canada. Okay. You know what I mean? Like if you come in the summer, it's just like regular like US city. And, and the snow. You don't need to freeze. <laughs> Where we get where they pull out the maple syrup and they give you a whole feast that everything has maple syrup in it. Ooh. You really embrace <laughs> maple. You really embrace the maple. Exactly. We salute to the tree. Yep. I am frozen. I know. <laughs> I realized it. I would thought you were just really engaged. Yeah, <laughs> I am. <laughs> and they're just like this cute. Can I take photos off? Like this is embarrassing. <laughs> I can't. Awkward. <laughs> Okay, so I know I said I wasn't going to update you in a while, but Apollo had a dream. Julius Caesar appeared. Like, Apollo was Julius Caesar in the dream. Anyways, this is how Apollo learns things, because obviously he's still the god of, like, oracles and, like, visions and stuff like that. Caesar seems like he will be the main protagonist of this book, which is exciting, because I think he's the only Roman emperor I know. Makes a great salad. Love him. Um, don't actually love him, obviously, because he is clearly evil if he will be the antagonist. And I trust Ricky Boy to tell the truth about history. So we'll see where this goes. Okay, coming back here. I was right to be suspicious that it's not the Julius Caesar that I know. It was another person named Gaius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, who had the nickname Caligula, and he had been named after Gaius Julius. Caesar. So Julius Caesar is the one we know, or is more famous, I guess, if you know Roman history. And this one is Caligula, who is a different person. Learning so much. Hello, I wanted to do a quick update before my phone dies for the Burning Maze. I got to page 150. I'm in the middle of chapter 15. So we are currently aware, like I had mentioned before, that we are dealing with Caligula. 
sorry, the hockey game is on. So if the lighting is weird, that's just what it is. But Calig Caligula, he was the Mad Emperor. I did some research. I looked on Wikipedia great source and it said he was the mad king he didn't care about being mad like he enjoyed causing harm so what we're seeing now is that he enjoys like setting people upon apollo obviously all these emperors have one goal and that goal is to capture apollo but at the same time he is also choosing to sort of torture meg by making her relive memories with nero and then also with piper her father goes bankrupt and that is due to the like financial group that these emperors are a part of that we learned in the first book. They have caused Piper's dad to go bankrupt. They're moving away. We learned that Piper and Jason have broke up due to this like stress and keeping secrets from one another. And Piper is willing to take them to the burning maze, the labyrinth, in order for them to find the missing oracle. And that is where we currently are at. Piper, Meg, and Grover are now at the beginnings of the labyrinth. So we'll see what happens. We're going to be diving deeper into the maze. Um, they are looking for Piper for help and we're going to see what happens. The cute thing that actually happened, in, um, which is unrelated to them going to the maze, is just how Meg and Piper have bonded over the fact that a Roman emperor has ruined their lives, which I thought was really cute. I think Meg needs more friends and people who understand her. So that was a nice moment um, to have with Piper. We'll see what happens. We're still early on in the book, but I feel like a lot has occurred in order to push us into this main aspect of the plot. Okay, so before I close for the night, I just wanted to talk about where I am in the book. So I did get to chapter 22. Let me go get the book actually. No, sorry, I got to chapter 23, page 210. So I'm like pretty much halfway through the book. You know what, my goal of finishing it in one day might successfully happen tomorrow because i am absolutely flying through this book really really enjoying it i think the plot is very engaging in this one and i don't know if it's because we're interacting less with like evil figures and more relationships between individuals so what i mean by that is a lot of the time rick Riordan books tend to be like battles upon battles upon battles and in this one they did have a couple of battles of course but they didn't feel like as drawn out as I feel like they normally are and we're really looking at the relationships and Apollo learning from his past transgressions as a god and his relationships and the way that he treats people so what we're seeing is that the dryads and the centaurs are in trouble the mazes are burning the forest fires are happening and a lot of this is blamed on Apollo because Medea is down with the titan like her father's flame the the sun fire flame and she is wreaking havoc on the labyrinths on the mazes on the crops on everything that is basically affecting nature and that's why the dryads and the centaurs are really upset with apollo they do try to help him enter one of the mazes and two of them get majorly hurt so the dryads don't want to help apollo anymore piper realizes that they may need to call upon Jason because she finds out that Jason had reached the middle of the burning maze and spoke to the oracle that is trapped inside this burning maze. This is the maze that Apollo needs to enter in order to save this oracle while also understanding that this maze is set up as a trap by, what is his name? Caligula. <laughs> Learning that Jason met this oracle and was able to escape, they go to Jason's school. Now, what we learn is that Piper and Jason have broken up and I remember why I hate their storyline so much. I find Piper and Jason to be the most annoying characters and it's not because of the gods that they hail from. It's not because of the things that they did do. It's because of their on and off again tumultuous relationship that I just cannot handle. I know it's very teenagery, I know it's very normal, and I know that it's sort of comforting, I guess, to kids who are reading this and going through their own like tumultuous teenage relationships, but I absolutely just cannot stand it. And in this one, they go to speak to Jason. Piper's like, whatever, Jason, tell us what you learned. Don't lie to us again. And Jason's like, I lied to you to protect you. And she's like, whatever, I don't need to be protected. I don't care. Quite frankly, you're all demigods and you can all handle yourselves. And why don't we solve the pressing issues at hand, which is a maze on fire that Apollo needs to go into. So anyways, they're taking Jason out of school and they are going to go into the burning maze together. And that's where I'm at so far. So besides like Piper and Jason, um, I'm enjoying this a lot, but that scene between them definitely reminded me why the Heroes of Olympus series was so difficult for me. We'll see where it goes. I definitely obviously think that Piper and Jason are gonna get back together, like duh. 
them being broken up is like so random. But alas, I am going to get ready for bed now and I will see you tomorrow. So in an effort to clean this disaster of an office that we just use as storage space, I will be bringing my unhaul pile to Village de Valar, which is Value Village. I'm assuming other people have Value Villages, but I will be bringing all of these books there because I just want to get rid of them. I had like goals to, to resell them, but you know what? I feel like I'm just gonna give them away and whoever wants them can have them. I'm just gonna bring them. So that way this room can start to empty out and we can start cleaning it. <laughs> She slayed today with the bean salad. Good morning. Why do I look like I have a sunburn when it's been raining in Montreal? Why? This is strange. Anyways, what we're not going to talk about is how I believed I could read this in one day. I really am hopeful all the time. And it just never works out um so let's talk about where i got to which is page 271 about things are starting to come together so what i'm really understanding is that the reason jason and piper are appearing is because they are part of like an oracle reading what's going on and it is that caligula <laughs> i still can't pronounce his name um is going to attack the camp jupiter so that really does affect um jason and piper because that is where they are from. Obviously all their friends are there and Camp Jupiter is more established than Camp Half-Blood. Like we learn in the Heroes of Olympus series that they have like cities and stuff. So it's a lot more of an impactful attack if it does happen. So right now we're on the Caligula's ships. Apollo and Piper are trying to find Caligula's shoes and they end up getting caught by Caligula's talking horse which i learned is actually a part of the roman emperor's like mythos because he's still a historical figure but like i'm doubt he had a talking horse you know what i mean oh wait i'm much further i just realized so at where i'm actually at which is probably like the 300 page mark they are now at a standstill with caligula because obviously they want apollo apollo is the main prize <laughs> throughout the series caligula doesn't really care about the other people he's just sort of using them as like bait for apollo and apollo in this case is being used because Caligula wants to become a sun god. He already considers himself a god as one of like the greatest emperors. He wants this appealing title, right? He's working with Medea because Medea is the daughter of the sun god or granddaughter of the sun god, uh, of the sun titan, sorry, Helios. So she has Helios's power within her. Through using Helios and Apollo, Caligula will become a sun god. And it's only through, I think, Caligula killing Apollo. And that's why Apollo is like, he's like, if you don't let my friends go, I'll kill myself. So because of that, then Caligula will be able to obtain Apollo and Helios's powers to become this ultimate sun god. And now I think I'm at the point where they are at this standstill, really. And Jason, Meg, and Piper are obviously planning something while Apollo is distracting everybody. That is how we will get to the end of the book. So I have about one quarter left of the book and I plan to listen to it all today. This is a promise. But will I update you before tomorrow? I don't know. We'll see. Oh my god. Welcome to the end of the vlog. So much has happened in regards to the plot. I don't want to really get into spoiler spoilers, but a major death happens in the series. And like before I go into my final review, I just really want to commemorate Rick Riordan for the choice that he chose to take. Because like if we look at authors today who write like young adults and adult books and they don't kill off their characters, Miss Sarah J. Mass. Rick Riordan is doing this in a middle grade novel. He is killing off a major, major character who just appears in the series. And I feel bad for complaining about this person before. It was wild. It was wild for me to experience, to accept. It made me care about this character a little bit more than I normally did. <laughs> <laughs> and it had big, big repercussions on the plot because we are saying goodbye to two of this character's friends. As Apollo and Meg begin to return to Camp Jupiter, here they must bring the body of their fallen friend um, to lay to rest while also helping 
camp Jupiter. As well, in this book, there were a lot of like riddles at the end of the plot as they're making their way through the labyrinth. In order to proceed further in the labyrinth, they have to solve these riddles. And one of the answers to the riddles is Belladonna's daughter. This means that they have to return to camp Jupiter to see Reyna. So Reyna will be our main like helper in the fourth book. I'm really enjoying how Rick Riordan, by the way, is integrating these past characters into the series. I feel like the series is already high stakes enough, but by adding these characters that readers are familiar with, it helps ground us in the plot points of the story while also making the stakes just a little bit higher. And obviously with this book, crazy high, crazy. But let's get into my final review. So I feel like it's fairly obvious, but Ricky Boy has done it again with this series once more. I knew going into this book that this series is just going to be one of his best for me. I am continuously impressed with every book and this installment certainly was no different. What I feel like makes this series a bit more special for me is the appeal to human emotions. Apollo is really learning to be comfortable in his human body and this means learning to appreciate that he is no longer a god and that doesn't necessarily mean that he has nothing to offer. He reflects on his past but he embraces what he is able to do now and also takes the time to feel the emotions that he wasn't able to feel before he's experiencing new things as a teenager like embarrassment fear grief the list goes on and because of this apollo's pov as i've mentioned before has definitely become one of my favorite riordan povs rick riordan makes his character so appealing and charming to readers despite apollo being a very arrogant god he's funny but as the series moves on apollo is becoming more humble and his growth is way more apparent and aside from the characters aside from my love specifically about this pov the plot in this installment was probably one of the more developed ones it was more thrilling it had higher stakes and i feel like this was arguably due mostly to how intense and evil Rick Riordan made the villain in this one. Overall, this was extremely balanced for me and a really great read and I gave this five stars. I'm I'm just a shocked. I'm just a shocked. But that's it for this vlog. Please let me know down below if you've read The Burning Maze and what you rated it. Did you love it just as much as I did? And then don't forget that next month or rather this month that you're seeing this video, we are reading The Tyrant's Tomb and this is the fourth book in the Trials of Apollo series. But of course, that's it for this book and this video. If you would like to follow me on any of my other social medias besides YouTube, I leave a link down below to my Twitter, Goodreads, and Instagram if you would like to follow me there. And of course, because it is the end of the video, please do not forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. It does wonders for my channel. It makes me feel really good. And that's it. I never know how to end these things, so I will see you next time. Okay, bye!